It is episode 18 and finally... We are actually making the game. As expected, things just work. Uh oh. Because Christian can explain why the numbers go red. I, I don't, maybe it's wrong. I, just let's just move on. Hi everybody, hi everybody. This is Commander Shepard Christian. And this is my favorite shmup tutorial on the internet. <laughs> anyway, so we are working in this tutorial on the advanced shmup. And last episode was pretty crazy. We did a lot of crazy stuff. We did a lot of planning. We figured out where we're going with our shmup. We created a level. And yeah, the doggy zone for that episode was pretty substantial. But don't worry, you don't have to catch up to where I'm, I am in a week. You have some time to tinker on your level. But for now, I want to move on because we are about to actually create our game. We've been working a lot of prototypes, but now it's time to make them come together. In sweet harmony. <laughs> Just for a second, let's take a look at our at our uh, master plan, this is our master plan.txt. We had um, a task, we had to build a level. We did add the plane, we added the secret tech one and two. A secret tech one was uh, sideways scroll, and secret tech number two was boss mode uh, repetition. So, like the background repeating when the boss is happening. We did make a level, and we did make Makle. <laughs> make a compact tile set. So these things are done. We have finished our five prototypes. And remember, our first goal was to figure out the basics. We kind of figure out the basics and more than just basic. I mean, the explosion is not really basics. We did a lot of tinker on a lot of like really nitty gritty details, but uh, uh, we had to figure this out. We had to figure this out because one of our major concerns is sprite space. And this is kind of like was kind of like a make or break thing. We figured it out. So I want to have a ship that flies around, scrolling background and simple shooting that feels nice. We kind of already have that. We kind of already have that. That was kind of our prototype five because we, you know, we added the plane and that kind of already completed our first goal. But nonetheless, I want to bring in the explosions to that prototype. I want to complete our first, you know, real game prototype real, the actual game that we're working on. I want to complete that today. But also I want to chart out uh, the future, where we're we going next. So this is kind of done. Let us establish a second goal. Second goal. Because right now, okay, we have basic shooting, we have a background and so forth. Um, uh, there is one important aspect missing. We don't have any enemies um, and, and we don't have any bullets, any collision detection. So all the gameplay stuff is actually missing. So figure out the gameplay. Gameplay. Uh, I want enemies, moving enemies. I want collisions. Uh, collisions. I want enemy bullets, by the way. Enemy bullets. I want collisions. Collisions. It sometimes when you look at the word, it looks wrong. I, I maybe it's wrong. I, just let's just move on. And there is a one important concern I have, which is uh, how do we conserve? Right, space. This sprite space problem didn't actually go away. We just made it possible for us to maybe achieve our goal by making sure that explosions don't take away sprite space. And we made the uh, tile set for the background really nice and compact. But there is some additional problems. Like there's, we have a chunk of space free and we wanna make sure that this chunk of sprite space is you being used efficiently for our enemies and all the other sprites that will ap appear in the game. And that's kind of like a big topic that we still have to jump in. And generally, the thing we are approaching is uh, what we call the Great Wall of Schmups. So we want to arrive at the 
a, a great wall of schmaps or a big wall of schmaps. <laughs> wall. Um, the Great Wall is kind of like, again, if you haven't watched the, um, or don't remember from the basic uh, shmup tutorial, it's like this kind of problem where in shmup development you can just, you know, play it by ear for a very long time just tackling the next subject. You know, I want to bring in an enemy, I want to have bullets happening and all that stuff. It's fine, you can just go uh, along this way. But eventually you arrive at this weird point where the next step is not obvious anymore. And you actually have to establish a lot of systems at the same time to make the next step. It's kind of like this great wall that you that kind of like prevents you from advancing as smoothly as you could before. And we want to arrive to that wall and then we're going to make a plan to get over that wall. Now while we're here, I also wanted to go through a bunch of little tweaks and, and things that I've picked up over the over the previous episodes, people were writing some very nice comments about all the stupid mistakes that I made. One mistake in particular, I have a big shout out to Bonevolt who figured this out because I missed it completely. Uh, let us move a uh, blob. Let us slope a blob. Um, in blob, in a blob function, we do a, a, a ternary here, kind of a ternary, yeah, this one here. Uh, and that's wrong. This ternary is wrong. It's a wrong ternary. Uh, ternary. Ternary? Ternary. I, uh, there's an I. I pronounce an I in that word that doesn't exist. Anyway, in this line, I did a, I did a mistake, Rooney. Um, so what you have to do here is you have three and my, my R smaller or greater than six or four. The three and the my R needs to be switched. Because in this weird turn, ternary, ter, ter, ternary construction in uh, Pico 8, um, the first entry that you have, this first thing, that is the condition that decides which value you are assigning. And uh, they are not exchangeable. You have to do things in the right order. So uh, yeah, you have to def definitely have to do this thing here and here and here. So this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do, I think. I think this is correct. Let's see how this works. Six, five, four. No, definitely not this, this way around. So yeah, that was definitely this way around. So yeah, the, the, it controls the length of the spikes uh, when you are at five and four. Well, five is, is this, five is this. Um, but here in the four, uh, in, a, in a six, six and seven, right? Because this is smaller or equals eight, six, seven, and eight, right? Um, if it's smaller or equals six, we're gonna get a three. We're gonna delete number three and otherwise we're gonna delete number four. So um, yeah, so six, look, the spikes look like this. And if I set it to four, the spikes are just not there. <laughs> Uh, and I had it to three or four. And if I make it four or three, that looks like this. Yeah, now the spikes are really big because we're deleting the wrong circle. Um, yeah, yeah, this is this is correct. I don't know why my previous approach didn't feel wrong to me. Um, this ternary was re sometimes returning true instead of the number. And somehow that worked. <laughs> I don't know. It somehow worked. Anyway, so that's something that we have to keep in mind. I wanted to like show off the problem here in this blob prototype, uh, but we're gonna have to fix this problem again when we copy things over to our real prototype. All right, so let's get started. Let's load uh, scroll two. That is kind of like the prototype that includes most of the stuff that we wanted, as I said. I just need to get explosions in here, and then maybe I want to move things around kind of like you know, get settled in a little bit. Let's save this as our actual game file. We are actually making the game. So I'm gonna type in save cow map. I mean you to be careful. I don't want this game to be called cow map. But I'm like the temporary names are kind of like a problem because temporary names tend to stick around because as you keep using them and then eventually get stuck. So here's my promise. This is not going to be the name of the game. It's not going to be called Kaushmap, but it's kind of short. 
a short name that I want to kind of keep around. All right, so we have Kaushmap going on right now. Now let us let us let us think about what is happening here. All right, so we have a bunch of things here. We have an init, we have a draw function, and we have an update function. We have a tab called um, move and shoot. Um, let us make a tab called explosions. Wait. Is that a good idea? Okay, let me let me do it. I, usually what I like to do is make a tab for the draw functions and a tab for the update functions. So let me do, do a tab for the draw functions. I don't know if it, this is a good split, but I'm gonna make one. And then usually I make a tab for my tools. And then I'm gonna make a tab for, let's call it, should I call it shooting? I mean, let's call it gameplay. And then make I make a tab for explosions, or um, special or, or particles. Let's call it particles. This is my this is my organization. And now this move and shoot thing. There's a lot of stuff in here. I'm just gonna copy all this out, and I'm gonna put it into gameplay because it's kind of gameplay. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fig figure this out. So now that we deleted the tab, it should disappear. But, but it's not. Why you don't disappear? The tab doesn't disappear. Okay. Well, let's move all things over. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine, guys. It's gonna be fine. Um, I just want to set up, you know, our system, our organization method in the file in the in the thing. So you know, we don't. Ah, they only this, the empty tabs only disappear if they are the last tab. When you have an empty tab in between, apparently it doesn't disappear. Hmm. Okay, um, and then, so we have draw, we have update, we have tools, we have this. Now let us do things a little bit. So we have do shots, we have do muzzle. Muzzle is kind of, I'm gonna put it into particles. That's kind of like a special effect. We have my sign function. That is something I want to put into the tools. That is a typical tool. It's my tools tab usually involves functions that are used by all sorts of different things. Kind of like helper function that doesn't do anything specific, but it's kind of like a universal use kind of function. Usually I copy and paste from other programs into this <laughs> because I, you know, these are functions that I use over and over again. These are functions that I would wish they were part of the API. Uh, kind of like built into Pico 8, but they're not. All right, so this is shot Raiden. Uh, this definitely belongs here. We definitely gonna get rid of the shot Raiden eventually. Don't get me wrong. Uh, shot DDP, that's good. And that's it. Now let us look into here. We have init, we have draw. Mm, this draw thing belongs into the draw function, mm, uh, draw, draw tab, but I'm not gonna do it just yet. I'm, I'm gonna show you why in a second. Uh, yeah, this is just update and draw and init. There's not, not much crazy stuff happening. All right, so let us now open up the explosion prototype and get in the explosions in here. My first goal is to make it so, well, first of all, copy all this stuff over. And then when it runs without delivering any error, I want to press a button and explosion appearing. I just like to see if the, all this stuff works, okay? Okay, so I have a big Pico 8, that is our coach map, and a small Pico 8, don't talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> uh, load. Uh, I guess I want to expl prototype, right? Yeah, yeah that's the one. Oh, our explosion looks so nice. Our explosions look so nice. Um, right, so let me now copy all, out things from here that I like. I do want to have the parts. See the slow-mo thing? I don't need the slow-mo anymore. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna probably um, not copy this over. Oh, I, I don't wanna cut it out. I wanna just copy it out, jeebus. Um, right, we have the particles. Now in the draw function, clear screen is okay. Uh, we need, to, yeah, we're looking through all the particles and drawing them. I want to draw the particles, uh, um, I want to ship, draw the ship over the particles uh, and also the shots over the particles because the particles um, gameplay wise, you know, this is just gameplay, like game, game design uh, thinking. Uh, the particles are nice they should not impede gameplay. Like if there's a huge explosion, I don't want that explosion to be covering up gameplay relevant information like enemy bullets, for example. I don't want an enemy bullet to come in like a pattern and then you're not able to see the pattern because the explosion was in the way. So that's why um, the, the particles are drawn on top of the map, um, but below 
all of the shards in a muzzle flash and so forth. Uh, this is something I'm going to think about a little bit more later. Um, okay, we're printing particles, we don't need that. Yeah, and then otherwise this is all good. Uh, we have a function here called R&D range. This is definitely something that belongs in uh, the tools tab. Uh, now let us go in here. So there's a blob function. We're going to take that blob function. There's a spark function. We're going to take that spark function. And we're going to put all of these into particles. And then there is a function called explode and a function called do part. Again, these go into the particles. And then there is a grape function. Definitely want that. And there's a spark blast function that is definitely also going all into the particles tab. <clears throat> Very big tab in here. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a sound effect problem here. Uh, we do have an explosion sound effect, but it's the wrong sound effect because right now it's at zero and at zero we have the shooting. So let me copy out. Can I copy this out? Uh, zero notes. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Copied SFX zero. Sometimes you have to click a little bit. Maybe there's a focus problem. I'm going to go to the uh, sound effect number one. I'm going to paste it in. Perfect. OK, so we copied the sound effect. Um, we want to go back into the code. Uh, into the code. Uh, and then do an SFX one when we explode. Um, so that's kind of like a little fix a Rooney. Uh, and then, yeah, let's just like do the thing where we press a button and explosion appears. Hmm? How about that? How about uh, this? Uh, button O and like so. Um, and then uh, what is the code? Is it just explode? Yeah, it's just explode. Right, we haven't hooked all of the updating, I think, into, yeah, yeah, see the do part part is, um, is we don't have this in the update function. <laughs> um, update 60. Um, yeah, let's put it at the end. Yeah, there's the do's here, do shots, do must, do part. Now there's one thing to consider is there's a lot of do functions where we do the things like we animate the shots and animate the muzzle flashes and we animate the particles but the, you know the implementation is slightly different for the different things do shots include the for for in all loop so you just call the function and that call function itself has a loop that loops through all of the shots um in here um the do part fu function just animates a single particle and the loop is on the outside um we're going to have to figure out which is the better solution. Um, this, this solution is maybe a bit more flexible because you are then able to and, you know, maybe have a different arrays of different particles and animate them separately from each other. Maybe there's particles in layers, you know, maybe, maybe some particles we want to appear on top. Maybe the muzzles will be actually particles, special types of particles. So, hmm, let's put a pin in here. Let's figure this out later on. For now, let's see if the explosion works. Yes. Now we can do. Uh oh. Oh, I think I know. Yeah, man. <laughs> we have BTN, not BTNP. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby! <laughs> so we actually trigger multiple explosions whenever I press the button once because the button is pressed for multiple frames. So we're getting way too many explosions. <laughs> oh man, I was getting worried for a second there. Yeah, see, it's fine, it's fine. We're good, we're good. All right, so this is all the code copied over. Now let us clean up a little bit the folder structure. Folder. Okay, so now my folder doesn't probably quite look as your folder. There's two folders in here, subfolders in here that you, that we haven't talked about. These are my personal folders. There's a backup folder in there a sync folder where all my projects live. Though they are not part of the tutorial. I do have, like if you looked and ever downloaded the code in the doobly-doo, um, sometimes I do provide assets in an asset folder, which are kind of like the, the PNG files that you can import my, my sprites from. So I have an asset folder. I want to now create a new folder. 
I'm uh, gonna call it prototypes, prototypes. And I wanna put most of the stuff that we have in that, into that folder just to make it a little bit more cleaner. There's lots of files that we have around and we now consolidated everything into one file. So we don't need them around anymore. Maybe we're gonna back, go back to them at some point and look up something. But for now, we, it's fair to just put them in, in, into a folder and have like a blank slate to work with because we're gonna create more files in the future. Spoiler alert. Right, so this is, let's just do it now some a cleanup, a cleanup phase. Um, again, we want to um, implement some of the um, debugging stuff that I, I had a list of debugging stuff that I, I accumulated over the, over the previous episodes. Again, let us go to the particles um, where we do the drawing blob, blob, draw blob. There we go, the blob. Here, um, we can, as I said, we have to move the, this around and three or four uh, screwed up this thing. So, okay, so this is fixed. Now, when we animate the uh, particles, uh, when we do do part, there's one thing that I, I realized something. Here, when we reach the maximum age of a particle, we add 32,000 to the maximum age. This could potentially, if the particle is really old, uh, lead to a maximum age overrun. And I want, so I want, don't want to add 32,000, I want to set it to 32,000. Uh, kind of like a little, little fix, fix a Rooney here. And in fact, uh, probably you could, it's a bit tricky, but because we, did, we did never have a particle that ends in a way that doesn't set the maximum age to 32,000. So why not just put it in here? Why not? If the particle is deleted, it doesn't matter anyway. And um, this saves a little bit, this saves a little bit. Um, right, let's see what else else on my list. I have a note here that I wrote down, color animate particles and draw. I'm gonna actually put this in my to-do list. I'm not gonna do it now, um, but I want to put it in a to-do list because it's, it's not a bad idea. Um, color animate particles and draw. So here's the thinking. Here's the thinking. Um, currently we are animating the color inside the update function, but something that you kind of have to do inevitably, and I don't like that, is when we create the particles, right? When we create the particles in, let's say in the grape, right? You see how we always have to set the color, even though we also set a color table, right? And we have to do this because um, sometimes a particle gets drawn before it had an opportunity to have an update function. And the color, the C var variable, is set in the update function. So sometimes C will be nil because it didn't uh, do an update first and then yet the particle already has to be drawn. So by animating the color in the draw function, we ensure that every particle that you draw to the screen had, had a go on the color and that allows us to eliminate, eliminate this line and you know uh, this line and I think some other lines as well. Um, that's a good idea. I'm not gonna do it right now um, because it opens a bit of a can of worms, uh, but it's probably a good idea to do that. Um, so basically the idea, and you can you can try it out. That's gonna be, that's definitely a cool challenge for the doggy zone. But yeah, this section here, animate color, putting that in the draw function rather than in the do part function, the update function for the particles. Something I also wanted to do is, uh, I'm not sure if we really need that color animation on on the on the particle explosion on the initial flash. You know, I it's barely you know perceptible, and it's it's you know it's whole five tokens that is just like you don't really see it. Like it could be just a white circle, and it would be the same. So maybe we can remove it later. And I'm gonna mark it with a star because this is a place where we could save particle, uh, not particles, we could save tokens. By the way, uh, the same thing with the speed function. We did a lot of, like the speed property, we did a lot of, um, I'm gonna write down that speed is the problem here. Um, we did a lot of tweaking on the overall shape of the, of the animation and I don't, I'm not sure if you really need to tweak the speed of the particles as well. It just adds a lot of complexity, you know, adds, adds to the whole, uh, you know, long table of properties that we need to set, that we are tweaking with. And, you know, it, 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 we could save this line as three tokens 
And we also need, can save this line. That's you know one like uh, two tokens here and or one token here, but also another token in, in every time we call the function. So I think the speed might not be necessary, and it might be worthwhile trying if we can make the explosion look nice without the speed variable. Um, another thing here um, directly in the update function when we are doing the scrolling, there's a interesting. Thing here so when scroll minus blah 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 like this this whole thing uh, with that minus this thing is greater than zero well we can simplify this we can simplify this a little bit and we're gonna say um, if scroll is just greater than this uh, then that kind of like saves us a little bit and that's also just a little bit more compact I think this is this a little better I just want to make sure that this actually works uh, but yeah I think it works Finally, there's one last thing on the Spark. You see how in the Spark, we are subtracting the speed when we draw the line. So we draw a line from where the Spark is to where the Spark was previously, but maybe we actually want to reverse this. So I want to try this, how it looks in reverse. The reason why I wanted to reverse it, so instead of minus, we're not going to do plus, right? Instead of subtracting the speed, we add the speed. The reason why I want to do this is that uh, if you remove all of the blobs, um, when the sparkles first appear, or when the spark sparkle, <laughs> did I say sparticles? <laughs> I am sparticle. Um, when the spark particles first appear, they are all at the same spot, but they already have a high speed. So it, you get like a cross, a weird cross, and I didn't like that. So um, this might might look better. They now fly a bit further out. I think this is okay. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this around. Just a little tweak. All right, this episode has been going for quite a long time. I want to do a little bit more cleanup if I can, if, you, if, if you'll allow me to do a bit of a cleanup. Uh, first, I want to, uh, we can now still do multiple weapons. I don't want that. I don't want the multiple weapons. Uh, this web thing, uh, we can remove this. Um, we want to clean things up a little bit. So when we then shoot, where is it? When we shoot, we always gonna, we're always going to do shot DDP. In fact, we're going to rename this function to just shoot. Um, and that will simplify things a little bit. By the way, I received a comment and I for, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the person who commented this, but uh, yeah, uh, there is a shot weight if statement here, like that, that reduces the counter of shot weight. And uh, the person suggested that uh, here when we're shooting, you know, uh, that we do this in here. For example, we just merge this with this if statement, which is another if statement about the shot weight, right? Uh, we could do everything in here and that would simplify our code a lot. And I agree, um, but I didn't do it back then because then back then it was still kind of like a prototype. I just, it was like this just very open <laughs> lab thing. And now we're in a more position where we are simplifying things. So I want to remove the Raiden part. I want to call this shoot. Um, now, um, yeah, so we could do this shot weight here, right? Wait, we cannot do it here. Wait, how do we do this? Ah, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. We in an update function, we can do this. So something we can do here is if shot weight is greater than zero, else shoot, right? Uh, and that allows us in the in the shoot function, uh, it allows us to remove this. We don't have a shot limit, but we said we're gonna maybe try it without the shot limit. That's okay. And this saves us an if statement. That's kind of nice. Still working. Good. And this is gonna be it for now for this episode. Let us move over to the dog zone. Yes, it's true, the dog is on. So we combined all of our prototypes into one big prototype into our cow schmuck prototype, and it's great. I love it so much. We're getting like into this weird phase where Doggy Zone's episodes will become increasingly difficult for me to set up because our um, situation here is so specific and the problems that we're dealing are, are so specific. I can tell you right now that in the next episode, we're gonna continue tweaking this prototype, make it more compact. We are now at 16,000 tokens. If you have good suggestions on how to bring those tokens down, I have some ideas, but you can post them in the comments section right now, or even try it in your own prototype. Just get those tokens down to kind of like make a nice compact 
core of our game that you can build on top. Another thing that also is going to be part of the doggy zone and that's kind of like the big challenge that we're going to tackle next time around, you can try it immediately right away, is to introduce a state machine. So what I want to do is at least two states. I want to have a start screen that shows, you know, like a splash screen and start game, whatever, like a menu or something. Start screen and the actual game. Create a state machine for our game so we can launch into the game and then when the game is over, you go back to the start screen and then you can launch into the game and re resets properly. That's something that's going to be our next step. And this is the goal for the doggy zone. For now, we're going to go to the supporter zone because I want to give a big shout out and thank you to beautiful people on coffee who are supporting this show, who are making this show possible. And we have some new supporters. I, I've been away for a long time. Now I'm back on the recording and a lot of people have joined. So right now, um, big shout out also and big thank you to newcomers to the supporters, which are Olivier Potov, Jamegens, Alice Parks, User1366, Jolo, Trevron, Frosty, and Joshua Carlson. Thank you for joining, guys. And as always, we have a little comment that I want to comment on from Yogurt Royale, commented in episode one. I really like the mech driving into the reactor concept. Do you think I could try and use that to make a PQ8 game? Yeah, I want to be, I want to answer to this because I want to be very specific and clear about this to everybody who is watching this tutorial. You are absolutely free to use the mockups that I created unless I've specifically copied some artwork from other places that it's going to be up to you to modify the artwork so you're not copying the thing I copied. You know what I'm saying, I don't want you to accidentally steal somebody's work. So for example, I'm pretty sure in the Moon is Haunted prototype I reuse sprites from Gargoyle's Quest and probably you want to create your own sprites there. So this tutorial has been going for 18 episodes now, so by this time you probably know that there is a coffee. And if you aren't yet, you can become a supporter of this show on coffee.com slash lazydevs, which enables you to watch new episodes earlier than they are released on YouTube. Check it out, coffee.com slash lazydevs. Right, right, right. So we are, things are coming together. Uh, next episode is gonna be more optimization. We're gonna create a state machine and we're gonna create plans for the future. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.